There we go. Um, how to hear the voice of God. There's four keys that we are going to share with you in the next four weeks. Four keys. Family, hear my voice tonight. If you take these four keys and you do exactly like is, is taught out of the word tonight, I can almost guarantee you, you will hear the voice of the Lord. By the end of tonight, this key that we are going to share tonight, I can guarantee you that you're going to sit and you're going to search your mind and say to yourself, no, I, I actually can hear. This has been happening a lot. You just maybe did not know that it was the voice of God speaking to you. Amen and amen. So, Habakkuk or Habakkuk or however we want to say it. Um, chapter 2. This whole teaching for the next four weeks is going to be based on this. Thank you, Brother Brian. It says, I will stand at my watch. First thing, the Lord gives each one of us sitting here tonight a watch. Did we know that? Yes. If you didn't know that, you know it now. The Lord has given you something to watch over. Whether it's your church or whether it's your, your, your wife or your husband, whether it's your children, the Lord has given each one of us something to watch over. It goes further and it says, And station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he says to me. Does that sentence sound a little bit off? Mm -hmm. How can someone look to hear what someone says? Isn't it I must listen to hear what they are saying? So we're going to get into that to, to show where the next two keys come from. It's going to come out of this. So I will look to see what he says to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Verse 2, then the Lord replied, write down the revelation. Okay, there we've already started last week with this one. Write down what the Lord tells you. We as human beings forget things day and night. I was filling out forms for, for um, the, the residency visa a while ago, and I forgot my wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't call her on her name every day. I've got, I've got beautiful names for her, like lovey and sweetie, and, and the other things I can't say in public, but I, you know, anyway. Um, so write down um, the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that the herald may run with it. So we are going to start off there tonight. Family, there's going to be a vast amount of knowledge that is going to be thrown at you tonight. If you missed anything, please go to Brother Brian afterwards. He's got this presentation. He'll email it to you. Amen. And then right at the end of this whole teaching, uh, week uh, six, I'm, I'm going to have a session of uh, question and answer. Not that I know everything, but we can do it together. Amen? Amen. 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 So, what I am, for those who missed it last week, family, my intention with this is the next. I have 23 years experience in walking in the kingdom of God. I want to share that experience with someone that's just started now. Mm. So that you don't have to make the mistakes mm. that I made mm. to try and get to this point that I am at today. And believe me, family, I've made a list of mistakes from here to the moon and back. Hey, I'm human, it happens. So this is my intention. Um, and I'm not charging anyone for it. The first key, if we go to the next one, please, Brother Brian. First key is recognizing God's voice as a spontaneous spirit thought. Hey. What do you mean by that, Job? When the Lord speaks to us as humans, He speaks to us in our spirits, in our hearts. Okay? Our minds have to be taken captive and made obedient to Jesus because there's two other people that speak in our minds. That's the enemy and it's us. Okay? Not that the Lord can't speak into our minds, but the Lord speaks into our spirit. So the first key that we are going to look at tonight is that the, the, to recognize that the voice of God is a spontaneous spirit thought. Now, we're going to get to what is a spontaneous spirit thought, Job? We're going to get to that now. The next one, please, Brother Brian. We can see that those who have studied theology, and there are a few of, 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 of us here um, tonight, God's voice, which is rhema, is the spoken word. 
is a spontaneous thought or a word or an idea or a feeling or a vision. We have just gone through the book of Daniel. We can see there the Lord worked in all of these. He worked in words, in thoughts, he worked in visions, he worked in dreams. So the, the Lord speaks in our spirits in, in, in all of those, those ways, many ways, but they are always spontaneous. We're going to get into it in a bit uh, more detail now. The next one, please, Brother Brian. Thoughts from our minds are analytical and logic. Mm -hmm. Think about this, family. Almost every thought that we have, we try and analyze something. We even do it with the Word of God. Okay? So there you can already determine whose voice you just heard now. If you are analyzing what you have just received, it's, it, it's your thoughts. We are logic, analytical human beings. We try and pan everything out before we do it. Okay? Um, so thoughts from our heart are not logic. They are spontaneous. We're going to get into detail. Let's, let's have a look what John Chapter 7, the next one please, Brother Brian. It says, On the last and the greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow in and through them. Spontaneous. Amen? A river doesn't stand and think logically whether it must flow now or not no it just does it because why it was created to flow plain and simple family let's not complicate the word of god amen, amen. the next one please brother brian john chapter 7 it says on the last day the um, the, the great uh, day of the feast Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture says, out of his heart, not logic mind, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. For those who are new in this, the living water is a representation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moving and, 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 and working in and through us. Now this is beautiful. Again, there are uh, a few of us sitting here who have got theo theological uh, uh, knowledge and you'll know this. For those who don't know it, the next one please, Brother Brian. Naba. The, the, the Hebrew word Naba is the Hebrew word for prophet. And the word prophet literally means to bubble up. How beautiful is that? Huh? So in the old days, in the Old Testament, when the Lord spoke through the prophets, that's exactly what they did. They didn't stand and analyze logically what was just said to them by the Lord. They stood and they bubble up. Amen? And a lot of people didn't like the bubbling. Yeah. <laughs> Even now, if the Lord has called you to give words, sometimes people stand, oh no, sorry, not for me, wrong person. And so the word Naba is the word for prophet and literally means to bubble up. The next one, please, Brother Brian. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. One of the most beautiful, most powerful scriptures in the word of God. Or do you not know that your body, to point to yourself and say, my body. That's it. My body. It's easy to point to someone else and say, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. But point to yourself and say, I am one. Amen. Okay? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God, and you are not your own? Yes. That's it. Yes. I am proud property of Jesus yes. Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I've been bought and paid for. We yes. spoke about it last week. I've, I've already got a stamp. I've already been sealed. That's it. Thanks. Brother Paul helped us with the, 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 the scripture. So that's been confirmed as well. Scripture is in the word of God. We've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Yes, Amen. Yes, um, the next one, please, Brother Brian. A follower of Christ's spirit is joined to the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one with him in spirit. Yes. 
I've said it, I think this is the third Sunday now. I'm going to say it again because I feel led by the Spirit of God to say it. The book of Genesis teaches us that we were created in the image of God. If we believe that scripture is true, why in the name of Jesus do we not live it? Why? Family, this is, this is a time for stock take, for, for looking to our own lives. Leave the person next, next to you. The Lord will sort them, them out. Um, but this is, is for us. Brother Brian, the next one, please. Um, we are branches joined together in the vine. John 15, 5. I am the vine. This is Jesus mm -hmm. making a statement that no one can refute. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain, don't move. Yeah. Remain. Stuck. Planted. That's it. Anyone that works with animals, yeah, you'll know. If a cow doesn't want to move, he doesn't want to move. You have to get a forklift. That's it. And then wherever you put him down, he still stands there. Same with us, family. Um, I am the, the, the vine. Me, Jesus. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. When Jesus says much, family, it's much. Amen. Amen. You will bear much fruit if you remain. Now, this has always been a, a, a beacon or a compass for me to see and for you to see if someone is truly serving Jesus or if it's just a play. If they bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, this is what's happening here. If it's a gain to them, you won't see any fruit of the Spirit of God. Amen. Uh, please, Brother Brian, the next one. The following will characterize God's words or thoughts bubbling up in us. So, listen carefully, family. The first one, it sounds like your own thoughts, except it's coming from your heart and not your mind. So they are spontaneous, not analytical. Okay? They're not logic. And we're going to get to, to, to that now. The second one, it normally comes as a first-person thought. I'm going to get to that as well. And the third one, it is normally gentle and often cut off or interrupted by your own logic thoughts. Okay. Now, I want to say this. I get out in Hawara. I walk in town. Right next to the road, there's a beggar sitting there. Filthy beggar, according to us as humans. Yep, that's what we do. We label each other, don't we? I don't know what he went through to get there. Okay? But I still judge him. As I'm walking there, the Lord says to me, Jacques, the $10 that's in your pocket, give it to him. And then God said that. All right. Now, now, to judge whether that thought came from the Lord is easy because the very next thought would, that, that would come up normally in us as humans is he's just going to buy booze yeah. with it. Yeah. Amen. Right there, family. You dig out that $10 and you give it to him because you know for sure you heard the voice of God. For sure. And we're going to see now why I am saying that. The next one, please, Brother Brian. It will be an unusual thought. This is amazing. It will be more wiser than me. Yep. It will be more loving than me. It will be more edifying than me. Can we see this, family? So this first thought that popped up, bubbled up in my spirit, will be more wiser than me. And sometimes, and, and maybe this has happened to us, I spoke to a brother in Christ last week that said to me, Jacques, this, is, this has happened to me numerous times. And thankfully, he's identified it and he's moving on it. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you will get to a point where you get a thought and you act on the thought and you stand back and you think, that wasn't me. It was definitely not me. That was so much wiser than what I could have ever. <laughs> Amen? Let's give the Lord the credit that's due. Yes, yeah? Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, number five. You will have an uncontrollable reaction to this thought. Excitement or yes. conviction yes. or faith or peace or love. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. You will have an uncontrolled... The Lord speaks to you and says, there's a soul that needs salvation. I want to give you a message for excitement. Especially if you are born evangelist. And all you want to do is preach the word of God. Amen. You're going to be excited. 
Doesn't matter what happens after that. Doesn't matter. Because the slap that he might give you, the Lord will eventually take the pain away. <laughs> Amen. I've experienced that over and over again. <clears throat> Let's smile a bit, family. It's not that bad. <laughs> there we go. Number six. When we are obedient to the thought, you will sense a strength and a joy to carry out the thought. Amen. I cannot count how many times. Yes, yes, my spare rib sitting here, my beautiful wife. She can, she, she can maybe count. I can't count how many times the Lord has spoken to me and to her to go to people we've never met in our lives. We don't know what their names are. We've never ever spoken to them in in in, but they are about to commit suicide. And the Lord speaks to us and says to us, go and give them this message. That's all. Don't don't don't, don't ask them personal questions. You don't even have to make friends with them. Give them a message from their creator. Turn around and walk away. That's it. You know, family, we almost filled one of our youth churches like that. By, by speaking to people on the street about personal things that only they knew about. And then you walk up to them as a stranger and you say, this might sound loony, I know it will. But the Lord God Almighty sent me as his servant to give you this message and it's spot on family spot on but you're excited to 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 give it i can remember the very first time that i i preached as a street evangelist in our town i i was saying something that the lord told me to say and a man walked by and and it pinched a nerve and he went to a dustbin and he grabbed a a, a beer bottle out of the dustbin and broke the beer bottle and he was chasing me up and down that street to try and stab me it was amazing. <laughs> but I was filled with joy. Because not knowing it, he was spreading the gospel for me even more. Because now I was running and shouting even louder. <laughs> Amen. Oh, family. The, the word of God is so beautiful. Huh? To serve the Lord is a joy. It's, it's, some people come to church and it looks like they are at a permanent funeral. Family smile. Huh? Our king has won. Amen. <laughs> Let's not injure each other, sister. There we go. <laughs> the next one, please, Brother Brian. Statement. God is speaking to us all the time, every day, everywhere. We must train ourselves to distinguish between our own voices and God's voice. I can guarantee you, family, the next steps that I'm going to go into, you're going to start, you're going to have light bulb moments. Oh, my word, the Lord spoke to me here in, in New World. And the Lord spoke to me there when I was at the, 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 the bowls. And the Lord spoke to me there when I'm, you're going to see now. I'm excited. Are you? Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Let's have a look. The next one, please, Brother Brian. Now, man's use of logic is not spoken of or taught in the word. Nobody will ever be able to show me a scripture where Jesus went to the disciples and said, hey, my boys, before you do anything, you must think logically about it. No. No, no, no. Jesus said to them, you look to me in faith and then you move. Amen? So nowhere to stand and be logic is spoken of in the word. Number two. To be logic is a, a action of yourself, which is humanism. Because if I try and pan everything out logically that the Lord is telling me, what am I saying to the Lord? Lord, I don't trust you. I'm sorry. But you, it doesn't sound like you know what you're talking about. And so the next one, um, verse, uh, verse 3. Okay? <laughs> Number 3. Um, to use logic is yourself using Reason, which is rationalism, which is also a false god. Because you are rationalizing everything that is being said to you. And number four, um, it all results in knowledge of yourself, earthly and natural knowledge. So we are then not moving in, in, in Holy Spirit wisdom, we are moving in human knowledge. Does that make sense? And, and family, if you haven't been through this beautiful book, um, you'll see that... Uh, this book teaches us human knowledge, useless. There's a beautiful scripture where the Lord says that the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Huh? We stand and we've got all these, these, these diplomas and these, 
these master's degrees on our walls and we think, woo, I'm good. Oh, and the Lord is saying, my boy, you, uh, you don't know anything. You, outside of me, you don't know anything. Yeah. Um, please, Brother Brian, the next one. Logic goes against the following biblical principles. Okay. I resurrect myself. Here's a scripture there. Galatians 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. So if I no longer live and God tells me something, how can I then logically stand and think about it? Am I then not a fence sitter? Can, 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 can we see what's happening here, family? Um, please, Brother Brian, the next one. Um, I am using my gifts, my talents, my abilities, instead of um, presenting them to God to use. Romans 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Okay? This is a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's it. Lord, have your way. Move. Do clean whatever you, 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 you need to. There's a beautiful scripture in, in one of the Psalms where King David says, Lord, I pray. That you will hide your word in my heart that I will not sin against you. Why did David pray that prayer? Plain and simple, family. Because David knew that there's a place in our hearts that we can hide stuff. And instead of him hiding all that sin in that place, he prayed and he said, Lord, I pray that you will hide your word in my heart. That I don't have space anymore to hide this sin. Because if there's anyone that knew yes. that God sees everything, it, it was that man. Yes. David knew that God sees all. Oh. <clears throat> uh, please, Brother Brian, the next one. This is all still to do with logic. I'm reasoning instead of reasoning with God. <laughs> Listen to this beautiful scripture, family. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. This is God making an invitation to the prophet. He says, come now and let us reason together. Beautiful. huh? The Lord is saying here to Isaiah and to us. Uh, let's see the Lord is saying here to Isaiah and to us. If you get to a point where you want to reason about what I said to you, rather sit down and reason with me. Okay, Let's go a step further because, my boy, I'm going to win. <laughs> yeah. If you reason without me, you're going to come to the wrong conclusion. Yep. So if the Lord said something to me, I don't fully understand it or I'm scared to do it. And I sit down and I reason with the Lord. Lord Jesus, you just told me that I must go and do this. Please, can we talk about it? Yep, my boy, we can talk. My mind's made up, but we can talk. Yeah? <laughs> Amen? And so this is what um, this scripture is saying. So in logic, we tend to move God out when we reason. And then we come to a conclusion and act on the conclusion. Yeah. And then, when we've acted on the conclusion, we make a mess of it, then we go back and say, Lord, I don't understand, you told me. No, my boy, you moved this way. I said go that way. Okay. If we go to the next one, please, Brother Brian, this is still to do with logic. I have fallen to the temptation as in the Garden of Eden. I can now know all good and evil. Genesis 3 verse 5. For God knows, this is Satan speaking to, um, to the, the, uh, Adam and Eve. For God knows that in the day you eat of um, it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So sometimes we get to a point in our lives and, and, and our brothers wrote about this in the scriptures, in, in the letters to the churches that said, you know, sometimes, sometimes we want to be too wise in our own eyes. Amen? Proverbs. Is it? Here we go. Thank you. Um, so sometimes we want to be wise in our own eyes, which absolutely does not work. Okay. Smile, family, it's all good. The next one, please, Brother Brian. God does not call us to be, listen to this statement, the Lord told me this, family, and I'm living by this. I'm saying it to you as his followers. 
God did not call us to be logic Christians. God called us to be spiritual disciples. Amen. Huge difference. Amen. 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 I said this a few weeks ago and someone challenged me on it. I'm not going to say who won. Or I will. God won. Amen. I said this a few weeks ago. Nowhere in this book will you find one place where Jesus Christ of Nazareth called us to be Christians. Nowhere. He called us to be followers of Him. He called us to be disciples of Him. Christians was a label given in the book of Acts when the apostles were in Antioch. It was a label that was put on the followers of Jesus by the Roman Empire to say they are Christians so that they could be targeted. Now, family, a Christian could be someone that only goes to church Easter and, 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 and maybe a funeral if they like the person. But a disciple, this is our life. Amen. Church never ends for us. Amen. We go home from here and our home is a church. Yeah. We go to the place of our business and our business is a church. Yeah. Our children's school becomes a church. Yeah. Because when you get a phone call like we did last year saying, a phone call from the school saying, uh, listen, Jacques, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just phoning to, to find out from you. Do you know that your um, one son is distributing Bibles at school? <laughs> so I said, I, I did not know that, but <laughs> carry on. <laughs> so they said, no, look, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, we, we, we just wanted to know if you know, because they're brand new Bibles. So I said, well, please tell him before he gets home, if he needs more, I'll give him when he gets home. And it was silent on the other side. <laughs> Amen. Everything for a disciple is a church. This family is a church. I seek opportunities during the day to worship God. Everywhere. When I go to Countdown, I try and do this every single time as an act of worship to God. When I go out and I put my groceries into the car, if there's in, in, in the bay where the, the trolleys are, I, 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 I grab my, my, my belt, my, my, take my belt off, chuck it over the, 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 the trolley, hook it in, and I help to take the trolleys back for my God. Amen. He called us to serve. Not only in this church, not only in other churches, but in this world as well, family. Amen. 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 One amen is enough. Next one, please. Brother Brian, let's, let's put the two together. Logic Christians, they, they, they tend to move on code of ethics or laws or, or works or head knowledge or external guidance or self-effort. Conscious level only. But spiritual disciples move on the power of God in us. Intimacy with the Father a love for Jesus. Um, highlighted truth. I like the truth. Um, the Holy Spirit, uh, an encounter with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit's guidance and strength from Jesus Christ. Look at the difference between a, a labeled Sunday Christian and a disciple of Jesus. A sold out disciple of Jesus. I don't belong to myself anymore, I belong to Christ. Amen. If we go to the next one, please, Brother Brian. Now, biblical meditation. There's one scripture in the Word of God that I absolutely love. I try and quote it every week. Uh, Joshua 1 verse 7 and 8. I love that scripture. Absolutely love it. Meditate on my word day and night and be careful to do what it says. And then you will be prosperous and successful. Listen what my father, your father teaches us, family. Meditate on this word day and night. Think about it. Ponder on these scriptures day and night. Not only Tuesdays and not only when the pastor preaches on a Sunday. Day and night. Fill our minds. Flood our minds with the word of God. Day and night. Day and night. Day. Because then every decision you and I will make will be based on a scripture swimming in our carnal minds. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then... 
We will be prosperous and successful because my God is not a man that he will lie. And his word will never return to him void. It will always return to him having fulfilled what he set it out to do in the first place. Amen. And so, biblical meditation, the Holy Spirit's use of us as a temple, meditation, God's use of my heart and spirit as he fills and flows through me in my heart and my spirit, through the Holy Spirit. That's meditation, family. You know how beautiful it is? I, I, I did this once to prove to myself. I, I didn't show anyone else. I sat down and I asked the Lord for one scripture. I closed the Bible and I said, please, Lord, give me one scripture. And the Lord opened or, or made me open. So, and he gave me one, just one scripture, one sentence in the word of God. And he said to me, my boy, now put that down. Take this book. Take, take, take your journal. I, the Spirit of God, the true counselor, the teacher, I'm going to teach you what that scripture says. Family, I wrote eight pages back to front of one scripture. Was I the good one? No. Well, thank you for that. No. <laughs> was, was I the clever one? No. Was I the wise one? No. No, no family, I'm the first one to say no. Mm. Amen. It was... The Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. It was, it, it was that, that, that living water. It was bubbling up. You know when Jesus sat at the, at the well and he said to that woman, I have water to give you that you will never thirst again. <laughs> Family, you get to a point in your life where you can hear the voice of God clearly. You will know what Jesus meant there. You'll never be thirsty again. Ever. How many times in a day do we not find ourselves seeking answers to things in our yes. lives? My, my marriage is falling apart. I need an answer here. If I could hear the voice of God, He'd give me the answer. I might not like it, but He'd give it to me. Amen? Amen. And, and so this is, uh, th this is what this means, is the Spirit of God bubbling up inside of, of us. Please, Brother Brian, the next one. Now, meditation, biblical meditation, is encouraged 18 times in the Word of God. Beautiful. If the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and Father God in heaven says something once, it's important. If he puts it in his Bible 18 times, we must pay attention, family. There's something to that that can benefit us and his kingdom. Okay. So it is encouraged 18 times in the word of God. Is God in action within us? This is meditation. God is moving in us. Have you ever thought about that, family? You know, we read that scripture that says Christ lives in me. We don't know what that means. Yes. We've got no clue. If we knew what that meant, family, we would have no fear, no anxiety, no stress. We would, we would have joy, permanent joy. Permanent. Amen. Because Christ is in me. Now, before we, before we carry on, I, I feel led to, to say this. Logic, thoughts, family, are, 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 are very dangerous. I'm going to give you this example. Okay. Jesus and the disciples minister to a crowd. Okay. He blesses the crowd. He says to his disciples, I must go and pray. Get into this boat and go over to the other side. I'll meet you on the other side. Okay. Now, does anywhere in the word, is it written... If one of those disciples asked Jesus, how are you going to get to the other side if we take taking the boat? That's a logic thought. They knew Jesus. Okay? So they obeyed him. Can, can you hear sometimes, family, and we, we, we're going to get to it. Sometimes when the Lord speaks to us, it sounds ridiculous. It's, no, Lord, this can really not, this can't work. Yes, my boy, for you as a human, it can't work, but I'm God. Amen? Okay. So the disciples, first of all, didn't say, Lord, how are you going to get to it? They got in the boat and they went. In the middle of the night, the storm, um, I'm, I'm paraphrasing all of this now, a storm picks up and, and massive wave, they start panicking and stressing. Ah, because, why? Because Christ isn't with them. I'd also panic if the Lord isn't with me. Amen. Okay? And so panicking, the, the, the wind everywhere, but the two brothers are fighting, the, 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 the sons of thunder, do that. No, you, I told you that. And it's just chaos. And then, in all of that chaos, someone shouts, ah, look, a ghost. More fear. Okay? And then Jesus cries out and says, no, no, wait, my boys, calm down. It's me. Okay? And Peter recognizes 
that is Jesus. Now, here's the, 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 the next thing. Okay? Peter says, Lord, if it's you, call me. Jesus says, come. Okay. Does the Bible anywhere say that any of the other disciples said, hey, but <laughs> that's water. You can't walk on that. Logic. Amen. No. When they saw Jesus, logic went out of the window. Amen. Because they physically saw the, the miracles that Jesus performed in front of them. Not only that, he sent them out to go and do those same miracles. But today, family, this world has brainwashed us so much that sometimes we are so far away from Jesus, we cannot see him or hear him. And so logic's the only thing that we rely on, which is sad. I think we have number three. Meditation is God giving revelation through our hearts from his heart. Family, have you ever woken up two o'clock in the morning screaming and shouting? Everyone awake. Who broke in? No one broke in. The Lord explained to me what John 1 verse 1 means. <laughs> Jesus himself is the word. Yeah. Wake everyone up. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit birthing a revelation inside of you. And again, remember, the voice of God makes you excited to share with, with everyone. Yeah? That is why I'm, 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 I'm man enough to say, that's why a lot of people think me and my wife are loony. Because when we share the gospel, yeah. <laughs> go for it, my wife. <laughs> the loonier, the better. <laughs> Our brother Paul, in, in the word of God, if I'm correct, said that, that, that we are fools for Christ. Amen. The, the, the world looks at us and labels us as fools. You know, how can these people be joyful about this? It's only one bag of groceries. <laughs> Amen. Only one bag of groceries, but I asked my God for it. Amen. And he gave it to me. Why would I not rejoice? <clears throat> Losing my voice here. <laughs> Number four. I get also. Number four results in wisdom from God, not knowledge from man. So meditating on the word of God will eventually result in godly wisdom. Because Jesus said to the disciples, don't, don't worry that I'm leaving you now because when I leave you, I will give you the Holy Spirit, the true counselor. I will give him to you to guide you, lead you, teach you, and remind you of every word I said. Amen. The more we read the word, the more the Holy Spirit can bring the word to remembrance and the more we can act on it. Amen. Family, can you imagine a whole week just living in the word? Can you imagine getting to the end of that week? There won't be a prison cell on the face of this planet that will be able to contain your excitement. All the blessings that you received because you were obedient. Amen? Amen. Please, Brother Brian, the, the, the next one. We're almost done. I know this is a lot of information, and this is just the first key. There's three more to come. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Meditation feels like I've been running a marathon. Meditation <laughs> applies um, the next biblical principle. So you can, if you've received this from Brother Brian, you can go home in your quiet time, in your prayer room that you've allocated, sitting down with your journal, and you can go through these um, scriptures over here. So Galatians 2 verse 20, this is what meditation does. I let Jesus live through me. Did we hear what that sentence said, family? Yes. I give him permission. Yes. Hey, not that I have to, but Jesus is a gentleman. He will never force himself on anyone. Mm. Mm. Satan is a coward. He forces. Yes. He pushes you into a corner. Yes. But Jesus is a gentleman. He stands there and he guides you. He says, come here. Yeah, my boy, here's all the blessings here. You're in the wrong place. Amen? Yeah. And so it goes further. The next one. Uh, meditation applies the next biblical principle. Romans 12 verse 1. I am submitting my gifts to the Holy Spirit for His use. Amen. I am still today, I'm 45, 46. I'm somewhere deep in the 40s, wherever I am. My wife knows. So, um, thank, what? Anyway, um, when I came to salvation, I met, unfortunately, met somebody 
that, that posed as a leader in the church at that stage. I didn't do my homework and I fell into a trap. I was doing semi-pro motocross at that stage. And I can stand here and say that I was relatively good because it was a gift that God gave me. I just didn't know he gave it to me. I thought it was me that was shown on. And so I came to salvation and I met this leader in this church and he asked me, what do you, you know, what's your hobbies and what? And I said, well, I, I love the, I love motocross. And he said, whoa, motocross, huge sin. You, you must stop it immediately. I went home that day and I sold my motorbike and, and, and my kit crying my, my heart out. I'm still crying today and it's been 20 something years. <laughs> still crying. Every time I see a motorbike, I start weeping again. And so family, this, this is what I mean. Biblical meditation, I'm submitting my gifts. If I still stuck to that, do you know what a mission field the motocross scene yeah. is? Yeah. Yeah. The Lord could have possibly through me, because I'm relatively bold. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not here to spare feelings. I'm here to spread the gospel. Amen. 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 And that's what the motocross scene is, is about. If you can't ride a bike properly, they tell you you're a doorknob. That's it. And I'm, I'm, I'm serious. That's what they do in the world. And so, yes, yeah, submitting my gifts and my talents to the Holy Spirit to use. The next one, Isaiah 11, verse 2. When I reason with God, I will receive a spirit of wisdom, understanding, and godly knowledge. This is what we want, family. Not university knowledge. We lived in South Africa, but I study theology in Illinois in America. There's a very good reason for that. Because every single theological university that I found in South Africa, the lectors are all atheists. All of them. And so they teach you that this is only a book and it's going, going nowhere. This is history. That's it. Amen. I had a massive fight. I'm calling it a fight for lack of a better word. Nobody got hurt. I had a massive disagreement with one of the lectors at, that, at one of those universities. And I told him in front of the other students, you are teaching rubbish here. This is, this is untrue. Absolutely untrue. But because he had a doctorate degree, nobody listened to me. Yeah. Amen? No, amen. Number four, John 5, 19, 20, and 30. I am living as Jesus lived, and I am doing what I see and hear the Father do. One of these scriptures, Jesus says to the disciples, to the Pharisees, and to the Sadducees, I do not do anything unless I see my Father do it. That's it. He's my, he's my guide. He leads me. And that is why... You'll see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John through the, the, the Gospels that Jesus, in the mornings before the sun came up, went to a, 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 a quiet place and prayed. And then when Jesus came down from the mountain or wherever he was praying, the garden, and there was chaos there and the disciples couldn't cast a demon out of a boy, Jesus wasn't flustered. He knew that was going to happen because his father told him. Amen. Family. Do, do you not want to be ready for everything that happens in your day? Amen. Everything. Nothing surprises you because the Lord already told you it's going to happen. And this is biblical, family. He told the prophets this. So why in the name of Jesus can he not do it to you and me through the Holy Spirit? I'm going to give you this example before we carry on. Uh, before the next one, please, Brother Brian. Um... This morning I was, I, I was walking around here praying while um, the, the, the band was, uh, the worship team was practicing. I was walking around here praying. And the Lord said to me again, and I, was, I know this teaching, I've taught it so many times with, with my wife. I know this teaching and the Lord said to me, my boy, this person is coming to church this morning. Somebody that almost never comes to church. This person is coming this morning. And I tried to argue in my mind. I said, no, Lord, they never come. And the Lord said, make sure that you've got this scripture ready. They're going to question you on it. And I sat down here. I took my Bible and I looked for that scripture that the Lord showed me. And I almost never do this. You can ask my spare rib afterwards. I almost never do this. I sat and I memorized that scripture word for word in my mind and in my heart. 
And as true as I'm standing here, family, the worship had just started and that person walks in. I was so shocked. My, my legs went numb. Why? Because I knew the Lord God Almighty had spoken and I almost mm. didn't listen to him. Mm. Almost. And I don't even need to go further. Afterwards, they came to me and said, listen, Jacques, you know, this, this scripture, so and so and what and what. How amazing is it, family? That, and this is what we spoke about earlier. Label Christians. That Christians that almost never come to church, but they want to lecture mm. disciples yes. on how to live. How amazing is that? But it's biblical. It happened to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yes. Yes. Please, Brother Brian, the next one. Yep. Now, family, here's where the logic comes back in. To pray with an idol in our heart. I'm going to explain now. Ezekiel 14, verse 4. Therefore speak to them. This is God saying to Ezekiel, the prophet, speak to my people. Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus saith the Lord, that your God, everyone of the house of Israel who sets up an idol in his heart. Did we hear that, family? You set an idol up in your heart, which means no one else can see it, only you can. Yes. It's that place that David spoke about that's hidden. I'm going to talk about what these idols are now. <clears throat> Everyone in the house of Israel that sets up an idol in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity and then comes to the prophet to ask them, what does God say? I'm in trouble. I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of idols. Listen to this, family. If I have an idol in my heart and I pray and I ask the Lord for an answer to something, I'm going to hear the answer through that idol. Yes. Let me give an example past two, two and a half years, we went through an horrific time. That time was driven by one main idol, fear. Fear. And how many of us sitting here set up the fear idol in our hearts? So everything that we heard, we heard it through that idol. Yes. Amen. And now this is the picture that the Lord showed me. Please, Brother Brian, the next one. Yeah, we can see if I pray, this is me praying to Jesus, but I'm praying through the idol. Jesus answers me, but it comes back through that same idol. And so that idol just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in our lives. But this is what we are required to do. Please, Brother Brian, the next one. Is that when I pray, if that idol is smaller than Jesus... How many times, family, sitting here tonight, have you and I not witnessed this in our own lives? That our problem that we have is so big that when we pray, that's all we see. We don't see Jesus anymore. Yeah. We only see that financial problem. We only see this person that is stealing from our business. That's the only thing we see. We don't see Jesus anywhere. But we still pray because we want to be obedient and we try and be faithful but when we hear the answer we hear it through that same idol and listen here what the scripture says from this prophet family we must be very very excessively careful not to set up idols in our hearts fear anxiety stress lust and um, poverty family can be an idol in our hearts if you believe you were put on this earth to be poor, that can become an idol. Yeah. Amen? And so we need to receive the answer to a problem back from Jesus, not from an idol. Now we're getting to the end here. This is where journaling is coming in. Now, family, I want to encourage you, if you haven't done it yet, go and buy yourself a journal. Brand new one. Go and sit in your room. Take your Bible, just sit and listen to those spontaneous heart thoughts. That, that, that's all. Even if you just get one small thing, write it down. That's it. The Lord said I must read my Bible more. Write it down. One small thing. Okay? So this is, this is what journaling 
can, can do for, for us. Now, this is the things that we must keep in mind when we journal. A spontaneous, positive thought is from the Holy Spirit, who is the counselor, the teacher, and the edifier. A negative thought is from our minds, which is the enemy, which is a liar and a thief. Okay? It's going to want to steal that thought that just popped up, bubbled up in your spirit. And then the third one, a logic thought is us self, which is selfish pride and arrogance. Okay. So when we sit and journal, this is what we must think of. When we are walking in town, family, let me give you this example. I, I, was, um, I was driving one day to go and pick up my daughter. She was, she was just a little bit bigger than a shoebox. And she was at the, um, the play group, and I, I went to, to pick her up. And so I got to the traffic light in our town, and, I, and, and it was red. And I stopped at the traffic light, and I, and I waited there. And behind me, there was a very, very big, very big, real big Afrikaans man in a very big ute behind me. And I was in this tiny little, little car that, that you almost needed to Flintstone. And so... The light went green, and when the light went green, I heard with, with everything inside of me that the Lord said to me, wait. And so I did. Because I know how my God's voice sounds. So I waited. And this very big man and this very big youth at the back climbed onto a very big horn and and used all sorts of French and Italian and German words. <laughs> And as he was doing that, family, from this side where the light was red, a car went like this. Wow. That thing would have cut me in half. They would have picked me up in pieces there. And I looked in the mirror, and this very big guy at the back of me and the very big youth was very quiet. And he just went like this. Can you see, family? Now, now. Look what would have happened if logic had come into play. Someone else would have been standing preaching here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now maybe in some of our minds we are thinking that would have been a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Family, I say things that people think. Anyway. Um, <laughs> can, can, can you see if, if the light went green and the Lord said wait... And I logically in my mind said, no man, why, why must I wait? And I went. And this has happened so, so, so many times, family. So many times. So I want to encourage you to do two things this week. Go out and listen because we have to train ourselves. I couldn't do this from the get-go. I needed to train myself. Yes. Okay? We need to train ourselves to be able to determine what is this voice that I've heard now. Okay. And, and, and you will see, family, how many times in a day the Lord speaks to you. Yes. You will see how many times. It is absolutely amazing. Why does the Lord speak to us so much? Because we were created in His image. Why does the Lord speak to us so much? Because we are the bride of Christ. Yeah? If I'm married to a beautiful woman, I, 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 I don't live at home with her. She's in one room and I'm in another. We never speak. No, we communicate. We speak. And some of us speak more than others. I didn't point any fingers now, I just said. And so that is a lesson as well, family, in marriage and in our relationship with the Lord. When we pray, family, the Hebrew word for prayer, directly translated from Hebrew to English, means conversation with God. It's a conversation, it's not a monologue. It's not us telling God what must happen. Yes. We must talk and then be silent, as King David says, be still and know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. And then let the Lord talk to us. We can see in, in, in all of the books of the prophet, the prophet speaks to the Lord, then he's quiet and the Lord answers. Then the prophet speaks to the and the Lord answers. And, amen. Yeah. Some of the prophets try to negotiate with the Lord. The Lord says no. I, 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 I'm, I'm unsure where it is. The Lord sent one prophet to his people with a specific word. He said, go to my people and tell them this. So the prophet went. He gave them exactly that word. And logic came into play. And the people said to the prophet, ah, go back to God. We think you heard wrong. 
So the prophet does. He goes back to God and he says, Lord, your people sent me back. They thought I heard wrong. Listen what the Lord says. I'll find that scripture and I'll minister it next week. The Lord says to the prophet, go back to my people and ask them, I, the Lord your God, do I stutter? <laughs> no, I don't. That that I say is what I meant. That's it. Amen. And if we go with that, family, and so that in this week, two, two things. Get, get your journal. Um, one thing that I was going to mention uh, next week, but I, I feel for those who have started with their, their journaling, I, I need to mention this. Family, when the Lord speaks to you and me, okay, this is another thing that we can know if it was the voice of God or not. If the Lord speaks to you or me and we write it down, Whatever we have written down here will collaborate with a scripture in the word yes. of God. Yeah. Okay, let me give you this example. We did the first teaching of how to hear the voice of God in one of the first churches we served in. Okay? Shortly after that, a lot of people started hearing the voice of God. Okay? One guy walked into my office, Tuesday or Wednesday somewhere, sat down and he said, Listen, Jock, I, I need to talk to you. This is what I, here's my journal. This is what I heard from the Lord. I read it and I gave it back to him and I said to him, my, my friend, what, what scripture do you base this on? And so he says, no, 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 the Lord said this. So the Lord told him <clears throat> to divorce his wife. Okay, listen, it could be scriptural. Because the Bible says if the wife was caught in adultery, you're allowed to divorce. Vice versa, if the man's caught in adultery, you're allowed to divorce. Okay, But he said, no, she's just making me sick. Where's the scripture for that? I understand, family. So when we write something down in our journals, we can test it on the word of God. I'm going to, this, this, is, this is very, very personal now, but I'm going to share this. Okay, And as I'm sharing, I try and connect every sentence here to a scripture this was one of my journal entries during the week this is what the lord shared with me he said i am the father your father biblical he goes further and he says i formed you and i know you far better than anyone alive you may not have seen it or felt it but i have been by your side through all your good decisions and your bad ones you have labored in my kingdom and have paid a price for it. The cross you carry for me has caused pain and suffering to you. You feel wounded and alone. 